We are here with our social media correspondent, comic book editor, writer, Aaron Sparrow. How you doing, Aaron? Aaron? I, I mean, after after reading all these tweets, I'm really depressed. <laughs> well, I'm, I, I like to bring these things to your table. You always have good commentary on them, your takes on these things. And I almost feel bad for the people we're going to talk about today. We're going to hit up T. Franklin, Heather Antos, and Mag Visaggio. Just kind of, the, the tweets are kind of sad, to be completely honest, um, Aaron. But in a lot of cases, I think they kind of brought this stuff on themselves. So I'm not going to feel too bad about talking about it and what they kind of mean. Well, you know, when you put something out there on social media, you know, you're you're throwing it out there to the whole world. So I don't think you can really complain when people comment on it because you're, you're the one who put it out there. So the first thing we're going to hit is this T. Franklin thing. And this is a really interesting writer. Basically, she's she's black. She's LGBTQ. She's also handicapped and autistic. And you will know if you ever ask her because she'll tell you all of that stuff. It's pretty much how uh, she's marketed herself as a comic book creator. Everyone that I've ever talked to about T. Franklin personally, like I will talk to people, you know, I'm, I don't think Heather Antos is a very good editor and they will tell me Heather Antos is a nice person. I enjoyed working with her. Same thing goes with Max Asagio. I've talked to, you know, editors, comic artists, comic writers and that have interacted with, with Mags and I know some that like her. I've never met anyone that, that likes T. Franklin. She comes off apparently as a very miserable person and anyone interacts with her, at least that I know of, comes away with the same impression of her, that she's kind of a miserable person. She was in this DC round robin tournament and she had this ghost tour comic book, which I thought sounded okay on the pitch until I found out T. Franklin was on it and she had done that Harley Quinn eat, bang, kill tour comic, which was like, okay, I'll never read anything of hers on purpose again. Going up against the size sprayer Green Lantern book, he's easily the most accomplished writer on there. And it looked like she was going to win. I thought she had one. And apparently, once the results came out, she didn't. And she did not have a very good reaction to this air. This is the first tweet we'll talk about. She says, I think I'm just going to smoke weed, cry, eat ice cream, cry, take edibles, cry, and sob hysterically until I fall asleep. I can't imagine being in any point in my life to where losing a competition, and yes, it is a paying gig. I understand that. But to put yourself in such a position that not winning out on that would make you have to cry yourself to sleep. Do you know how many pitches that I've had rejected or uh, or just like they're very excited about it, but then like the editor disappears and, you know, you never hear from them again. Uh, you know, that happens all the time and you have to be ready for for disappointment anytime you're, you're going out for you know, in this industry, you know, you're pitching stories, you're trying to get things written, you know, get, get, get things out there with another company, you know, the company's characters, you have to be ready to be told no. So, but I think that what you're seeing is because, you know, someone like Cy Spurrier gets into the industry and he takes whatever job he can get and he, you know, writes his ass off and he just tries to do, you know, tries to do his best and just climbs that ladder of, you know, like, hey, I got a backup story in an annual. Okay. Now I got, you know, now I got like this eight pager in this anthology. Okay. Now I've got like a single like fill-in issue. Now I've got, you know, now, oh, for the first time I'm, I'm coming onto a book and I'm getting a, like a small, a short run. You know, that's a person who's worked their way up from the bottom and understands the value of hard work and that you're going to get rejected. But I think in the case of T. Franklin, who's, you know, as as far as we can tell, uh, didn't have a lot of uh, didn't have a lot of experience coming into this and was just hired based on demographics. You know, a person who's had everything kind of like handed to them, they're not going to understand when all of a sudden that. No, you're, I'm supposed to have this. I'm supposed to have this because I want it. You know, but no, it, you know, the, nor the way that it normal, you know, the way that it normally works is that a person works their way up and, you know, faces those disappointments and, and builds a career. So it's not completely unfathomable that that's, that that's the reaction, although it is pretty extreme to put out on Twitter. Yeah, that you're crying yourself to sleep and you're getting high because you had a rejection on a pitch for a comic book that people voted on. And it was obviously very close. And like I said, I thought that, that she had won. Now, a lot of people put her to task and I, we're probably making fun of her. That was a really stupid tweet to put out there. And then we got the T. Franklin specialty. You can't make fun of me because I'm a this or I'm a that. And I thought this was actually quite pathetic. She says, the way some of y'all are making up scenarios based on my tweets, dropping wrong information, making fun of my reactions and implying I'm leaving DC is wild AF to me. One thing you're all constantly forgetting through this whole shit is I'm fucking autistic. That doesn't make you special. That doesn't make you immune to criticism when you say something stupid on social media. 
No, but that's the that's the shield that's that's used to just kind of like say whatever you want and treat other people poorly and to wildly, you know, I, and I've seen it, you know, on, on Twitter multiple times, um, even with the, with people that I know, uh, people who agree with her on something and she will go on the attack because that's, that's how she gets the clout. That's how she gets the, you know, the Twitter likes. And that's very important to people that don't have a lot else going on. Um, and unfortunately I think that, uh, by, by the nature of, uh, of the various challenges that she faces personally. Um, I don't think that she's, she's out there a lot. I don't think she's, you know, she probably doesn't have a lot of, you know, that doesn't have a wide social circle. And, you know, when you're very insular and you're kind of like trapped inside and you're kind of trapped inside your own head, you have a tendency to become kind of very narcissistic. And I think that's what we're seeing with a lot of these younger creators is this narcissism. You know, they have to put their entire lives online, you know, every, challenge that they face or every disability that they have or every, everything about them is like crammed into their bio. And, uh, it's, you don't see that from, from people that are older, people that are more mature, you know, people that are actually, uh, you know, really like talented writers. You don't really see them doing that. Um, you don't see them putting all of them. I think she's our age though. I think she's in her forties. You think so? I'm certain of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, she's got a lot of of mental, you know, things going on. So, uh, you know, you kind of, they're, they're, I have, I'm not unsympathetic, but at the same time, I, I feel like you don't get to just lash out. You don't get to just say whatever you want and, you know, and then use autism as a shield. And that's clearly what's going on. She's clearly like putting up that shield. Like, I'm autistic. You can't, you know, you can't make fun of me. Well, if you say dumb things, you're going to get made fun of. You know, you don't have to put it all on the Internet. You don't have to put everything on the Internet that, you know, that you think or that you feel. And when you do, you're, you're basically Twitter is the public square. You're standing in the middle of town shouting things out and when people start shouting things back at you you don't get to complain you know you could have not tweeted it also she like burns people left and right essentially all day long the t franklin is on twitter almost all of her life and she's always calling people out taking them the task and talking shit on them if you want to be if you want to dish it out you better be able to take it you know people say stuff about me all the time i say stuff here on the channel you know it just comes with the territory i don't yeah, no, be I mean, like well listen i'm a dad you can't talk to me like that i'm a dad <laughs> I was in the here. I was in the military. Yeah, you know, veteran. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and nobody gets uh, there's there's no there's nothing that is a pass for uh, for bad behavior or for uh, you know ridiculous behavior. If you you put it out there, you're gonna get made fun of, and that's just uh, that's just what you have to be ready to do. You know how many people have said stuff about me? You know, it's like you gotta you gotta develop a thicker skin if you're gonna put yourself out there. Absolutely, especially if you're going to talk shit about other people. It's, you know, mm-hmm. Basically, ad nauseum. Now, there's another tweet. I thought this one was actually more sad. I think it's more sad what Heather Anto says here because I don't she, think she realizes what she's implying about her own capabilities and the way that the industry sees her, which I know this. I've talked to people, and it's not a closely guarded secret that Heather Antos isn't a highly thought of comic book editor. And she had this tweet. This thing is, this is a jeb. This is what we call the true jeb on Twitter. The Venn diagram of creators I see asking for more comics work and those who do not respond to inquiries could damn well be a circle sometimes, I swear. I guess not realizing that people do want the comics work. They just don't want to work with her. Well, first of all, kudos for knowing what a Venn diagram is. Uh, I, I'm, <laughs> you know, that's a uh, good job there. Uh, but um, yeah, no, that's a. Uh, that's that's kind of sad because like you said earlier in the video um and, and i've talked to people too who who know heather you know people in the industry say that uh, you know who've interacted with her say that she's very nice and very pleasant and uh, not at all like uh, like she is on twitter um but the fact of the matter is if if people don't know that if you know when you're when you're reaching out to creatives who've only seen your behavior on twitter they were probably wary about working with you uh, so that's unfortunate. That's one of the reasons that you've got to kind of be professional and you've got to, you know, you've got to manage your brand. And again, don't put every thought that you have out on Twitter. You know, we, we all have a lot of dumb thoughts every day. <laughs> they shouldn't all be on the internet for, uh, you know, to be recorded for posterity. So, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate, but this is kind of the corner. Again, this is the kind of corner she's painted herself into. Yeah. It's just one of those weird things. It's like, do you, do you understand what you're actually saying here is there are people that, that want money. They want to get paid to make comic books. They just don't want to make comic books for you. And it probably has something to do with their online persona, but also has to do with, with their reputation in the industry as not being a quality editor and somebody that you probably don't want to work with because they're not going to help you develop that story if you need it. And it's not, it's probably not going to last that long. I mean, nothing, 
nothing in comics is really lasting that long right now, and especially uh, anything coming out of IDW, uh, where she's uh, she's a senior editor now. So, you know, it may have some, something to do with that, too, is like people are like, yeah, you know, it's the rug's just going to get pulled out from under me. I'm looking for something else. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. But, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to consider the way that people perceive you and you, you have to, you know, work on that. Absolutely. So this last one is Mags Visaggio. Mags has an interesting outside online persona. I know people, a lot of people have told Mags, you just need to get off Twitter. It's not healthy for you. You say crazy stuff all the time. Apparently, Mags has gone out of her way to use Twitter less, is sometimes regretting it and, and sometimes not regretting it, Aaron, because apparently Mags received herself as having a lot of clout back in the day because of, of likes or whatnot. This is what she said. I thought this was was more hilarious than sad, but certainly sad as well. Sometimes I miss my online clout, having not been a reliable Twitter user since the summer of 2019, but mostly I don't. It was nice commanding 500 likes on my average post, but the price and time and stress and misery isn't worth it. <laughs> You're a professional comic book writer. You were excited to get 500 likes on a tweet. How about selling 500 copies of a comic book because your name was on it? Jesus. Like, how low do you think of yourself? You get excited. You were getting excited about likes on tweets. Well, this is this is the, the really sad thing about uh, one of the really sad things about Twitter and why Twitter is such a garbage fire is that you think that 500 people liking your tweet somehow means something. I understand there's a dopamine hit that you get when you put something out and then it's like, oh, people are like, oh, look, people are retweeting me. Aren't I important? Um, you're not. That doesn't make you important. Twitter is just Twitter's not a real place. You know, the real place that you should be focused on is the comic book market. Did you tell a good story? Did you move a lot of books? Did you did you build a fan base? You know, when you go to your next project, are people coming over there because, you know, they like what you wrote and, uh, you know, they like uh, they like you in general. You know, they, they feel like you're a good brand. Those are the things that you should be focused on. And to, to a larger extent, you know, Ma what, what Mags is dealing with, with the, the loss of clout and the feeling that that was that was you know, getting Twitter likes was important. That's what you see with like Gail Simone. That's, that's Gail's whole thing right now. You know, it, for, for years now has just been being a Twitter personality. It's certainly not been putting out a book that feels like you even wrote a second draft. Um, <laughs> unfortunately people get caught up in this Twitter thing and tw look, Twitter is just a fire and forget thing to put out like jokes and, and snarky, you know, snarky commentary and, and pictures of cats. That's what it should be. It should, never should have been anybody's personality. Well, you can see how the cloud actually ended up blowing up in Mag's face. I guess, you know, all those 500 like tweets that, that she was putting out, she decided that she could go out there and try and like destroy Sean Gordon Murphy's career by saying he was love bombing her or whatever, because he didn't give her the opportunities that she wanted in the comic book industry. And it's like, if you hadn't thought that you had clout because you were getting likes on Twitter, maybe you would have realized that you shouldn't go out there and attack somebody with no justification whatsoever. And it might not, and it might hurt your reputation in the comic book industry. Yeah, you thought you had clout and you went out and you weaponized it to try to hurt somebody else to elevate yourself. And people looked at that and people said, well, you know what, that's not somebody that we want to work with. That person seems unpredictable. That certain person seems to be someone who will turn around and bite the hand that feeds them. So, you know, you, you, your Twitter clout didn't really amount to anything except nuking your, you know, your viability as, an, as somebody that people would hire. Absolutely. And, and the, I've been told that the reason Mags doesn't work for Marvel isn't even got to do anything to do with the Sean Gordon Murphy thing. It has everything to do with that baseball bat tweet. If she if Mags didn't have a Twitter account, she'd probably be still writing for Marvel. But once she put out that tweet for that Internet clout, for that dopamine hit to have this really hot take about how she's going to take a baseball bat to all the cis people in the world because of a, a ruling by the Trump administration, it essentially killed her ability to make money. You're writing comic books for Marvel. That clout, that, that clout wasn't worth it in the end. No, and really, when you're when you're a writer, it should be about the work. It should be, be, be about the work that you're putting out there. Twitter has become detrimental because we've seen the the warped and broken personalities of so many pros. Uh, you know, we've seen uh, you know people that like if you met at a at a convent you know at a convention you were out at the bar and you had a conversation with like you know you'd probably come away with a pretty good uh, pretty good impression of them because people tend to be more polite in person but when you get to see the id you get to see the worst aspects of their personality put out on the internet and uh you know like a, a guy like ron mars who maybe if you met at a convention you'd, you'd feel uh, he's a gem i heard he's like one of the nicest people you'll ever meet in your life 
Yeah, but the, but on Twitter he's an asshole, and the Trump reason complete douchebag. The reason that he can be an asshole on Twitter is because you're not right there in front of him. He won't get punched in the mouth when he you know when he mouths off. <laughs> you know these people. These are people who in real life would never say these things because they fear confrontation, but they love to be confrontational on Twitter because there's no real ramifications except for the fact that, you know, they lose popularity with the reader, their books, uh, book sales plummet and they hurt the publishers that they work for, but they don't care about that. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Most comic pros would be better off not on Twitter. If you want to use social media, you do Facebook or something like that. Twitter, it's just it's a time sink and it certainly it can give you a false sense of who you really are in the industry. It hasn't worked out for a lot of people. These tweets in and of themselves are actually pretty sad. Coming out from T. Franklin, Heather Rontos, and uh, and obviously Mags Osagio. As I mentioned, Mags Osagio has had a lot of issues using Twitter. It's actually ruined her career for the most part. If you don't know about all the, the controversies that Mags has had on Twitter, these are a couple of them right here. Definitely check this video out. Get up to speed on what Mags has done in the past. And definitely, Mags shouldn't be on Twitter at all anymore. 